Simon, what about this for a story? Ten years on from going out of business, yeah. Rangers qualify back into the Champions League group stages. I mean, has there ever been a better rags to riches story in football? Simon, when you look at this, and I well remember it, I well remember it announcing on Sky, Sky Sports News, February 2012, Rangers have entered administration, docked 10 yeah. points. It got worse later that year. Rangers have entered liquidation. It got worse. <clears throat> Demoted to the Scottish Third Division on July 2012. April 2016, returned to the top flight. Now, after an absence of the Champions League in the Champions League of 12 long years, they've returned to the Champions League group stages for the first time, as I say, in a decade plus two years. It's the first time Rangers and Celtic have begun this competition together since 2007. I mean, Simon, I remember it. They've come and gone. Craig White, he's come and gone. And everything that went with with that yeah. time. And Charles, and Charles Green, Green. And then a whole and, bunch and of them that involved gang, yeah. in and around yeah. there. Yeah. It's an incredible story that they're back. Well, it is, but it's not unexpected, is it? Because if you're going to go, if you're going to go from riches to rags, you'd rather go there with sixty thousand fans watching you every week when you're playing Hamilton Academicals, trying to rebuild yourself. So, with that in mind, I'm not surprised. I always felt, and I know that what they did was unfair and it prejudiced the opportunities for other people. But I always felt it was small-minded of the rest of the SPFL. Not, not so much Celtic, but the rest of the SPFL to stick the knife in as hard as they did because I think it damaged their opportunity yeah. commercially. But there had to be a consequence. Of course, the fact that the, the company was liquidated and reconstituted as something different with the same you know values and same assets that were ultimately in the first business is by the by. They've come back through the division. What it is, what it is, is them getting into the um, Champions League is a good story for Scotland because now you've got two sides in the Champions League. You've got commercial arguments to be had about the veracity and validity of Scottish football with those that sponsor your domestic leagues. I'm hoping and assuming that as a result of two Scottish teams in that division, there might be a revenue share as a result of their participation in the Champions League that kicks into the other sides that were so helpful when Rangers had their problems back in the day <laughs> 10 years ago. Yeah. And I also think yeah. it's a fabulous endorsement of a manager having the courage of his convictions to make a decision, take a player out, and then not have to listen to the blowback of losing a game because that player wasn't featured in Morales. Right. And they've overcome it. So I'm very pleased for them. I know you're impressed by Giovanni van Bronckhorst. To a point, he's, yeah. He, yeah. To a point. He's, he's done well. He took over from Gerrard, who they loved, of course, because Gerrard and Rangers stopped Celtic uh, in their tracks from winning another league title. So now it's van Bronckhorst time. And last night in uh, Holland, after they eliminated PSV Eindhoven and they march on in the Champions League, the Rangers manager was delighted about the achievement. You know where the club comes from. You know, in, 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 in 10 years ago, we were, you know, at the lowest point we have uh, in, in history. And, you know, it took us really hard work, everyone involved, from, from building the club back again uh, to the level we, we achieve now. So it's always, it's a proud moment for me to also, you know, thank all the people who gave, you know, so much energy and, and, and time to build this club back again. And uh, Seville was a proud moment for us to, you know, compete for uh, for the second European Cup in history, and I think uh, today we have the same moment to be in a draw for Champions League and uh, compete with the best teams in Europe. It's astounding, really, what they've done. So they are now back in the yep. Champions League group stages, and so are Celtic. Of course, Rangers yep. and Celtic can't meet each other. They're in pot four. They're in the same pot. But Rangers and Celtic will meet one of uh, the pot one um, people who include Real Madrid, Eintracht Frankfurt, Man City, AC Milan, Bayern Munich, Paris Saint-Germain, Porto, Ajax. The list goes on. Yep. In pot two, Liverpool, Chelsea are in there. Um it, it is an amazing list of names. Tottenham are in part two as yep. well. So you have to think, would it would it be great if Rangers or Celtic or both end up playing English opposition, Sam? Well, it's always such a fascinating uh, uh, game, isn't it? And, uh, and in the past, despite all the parody and ridicule and smart-ass comments from people like me, it, t it tends to be <laughs> that the, the Scottish teams come out doing very, very well. Yeah. So... With that in mind, yeah, it will be great, the Battle of Britain and however it's built in the media. But the fact that both of these teams are in the Champions League proper, the fact that they've both got an opportunity to generate some significant revenue will slightly disadvantage the rest of the teams in the SPFL. But notwithstanding that, it doesn't allow Scott, um, <coughs> Celtic to disappear into the ether 
because they had this opportunity to get this extra 30, 40 million quid that Rangers didn't have. And I just think it makes a decent landscape. It makes a decent backstory because what I do want is I want to see the Scottish leagues funded properly by broadcasting deals or commercial deals that can give them an opportunity because once upon a time, some of the best players in the world came out of Scotland. We have one of them sitting here on a Monday uh, Monday morning, Monday morning with Sunes, yeah. and that calibre of player has diminished. You can make cases for, for Kieran Tierney, and you can make cases for John McGinn, but we're not talking about those. We're talking about Dalgleish, we're talking about Sunes, we're yeah. talking about Hansen, yeah. we're talking about those kind of players. We're not talking about Alan Ruff, by the way, the goalkeeper. We're talking about those kind of players that came out of Scotland that were a real addition sure. to, the, to the football world. There, there's one, there's Craig and Shurton. If you were Ross Wilson at Rangers now, Simon, um, do you think Rangers will now go and get a couple of decent signings now? They've got the money assured coming their way from the Champions League. Um, Would you move in the market now, Simon? Well, I think you've got this You've got this circle, you've got a square with a soppy centre forward, haven't you? Yeah. In terms of his behaviour and what you're going to have to do there. So Soon I, as said, kick him out, would you? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I wouldn't kick him out as an owner. I would want the manager to tell me I want to kick him out. I wouldn't go down to the manager and say, hey, by the way, I'm telling you to kick him out because then you start a, a conversation that you don't really want to have. Yeah. Um, I would think that the balance of probabilities is that something's going to happen with that boy and something more productive for Rangers is going to come out of it as a result of it. Uh, I'm going to put a question the other side of this upcoming break about Rangers and where you think they actually are now in terms of where they got to with Gerrard where they're getting to with Van Bronckhorst but the Champions League draw will be live on Drive today 5 o'clock Goldstein Bent and European football expert Kevin Hatchard will take you through all of that Rangers and Celtic of course in pot 4 in that draw and so too big English contingent Manchester City Liverpool Chelsea Tottenham can't wait for that Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.